Welcome, everybody, to Mud Flood was Armageddon. The Mud Flood was the Armageddon. Don't let them tell you one thing differently. I, I switch it up. Don't let them tell you anything else. Unless they're willing to debate you in a fair and honest way. Brother RJ, hey, what's up? How you doing, man? Uh, not too much detail. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a little under the weather, and he is being a trooper being on here today. Welcome. Welcome. To say I'm, to say I'm not distracted, I would be lying, yeah. But I, I feel I'm on the mend, but it's slow. Yeah. Well, maybe these pictures will cheer you up. We'll see what I have. And look at that. Look at that, Randy. We, we, we decided... Yeah. We were going to go live and talk about the Freemasons, and for some reason, the Lord had had me prepare a thumbnail. So, if you're wondering how I got something so cool so quickly, we, you know, I had already worked on this this morning. Hey, did you know the only portrait we have of William Penn? And I have gleaned so much useful information from this video that I must have watched sometime between last night and now. The only uh, picture of the famous William Penn, 34 meter high statue of bronze of him above Pennsylvania. He's wearing armor, RJ. That's kind of that's kind of what you think is medieval fakery, right, or something? Well, it probably had some sort of uh, usefulness other than being uh, somewhat durable. I don't know how practical, you know, unless you know. Yeah, you just uh, just something you dress up for your portrait, and and and, and nice little. He had his ascot. What'd you call me? No, that's a. Uh, I got this picture saved here. Hey, this is a trolley bus in Philadelphia. That's be coming up during World War II. Wildcat. The P the white PTC workers engaged in a wildcat strike aimed at preventing the promotion of African American employees to conductors. And other positions. The strike ended when President FDR ordered troops. You troops go in there, and now you're the conductor and the other positions. This must. This is in our future. So I must have wanted to make sure I read that part. What's it got here? So we really don't know what happened until 1958, but. Three quarters of the trolley lines were abandoned. Almost a thousand were scrapped, replaced by diesel biofuel crap that didn't work. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States, including the Act of August 29, 1916, 39 statue 645 the first world war power act the franklin roosevelt when he wanted to take over in case people are going to go like i don't think that fdr would do that and take over the philadelphia transportation company well statue 39 645 would beg to differ with you so I'm not saying they're going to take over any trolley systems. I don't even know what's going on. And, hey, you know what? I made time, you know, because you know how I like to watch those old movies, and take the snapshots of them. Is that an abacus that we were just going over the history of computers and computation? Doug, on it is, is this an old Sherlock Holmes movie? And it's got an abacus that are made of skulls? That's crazy. Has the appearance. Uh, That's like a powder horn or something. I only cared about the abacus. I'd seen this movie before, 
Well, but how do they get them? Or unless they're not shown the entire, you know, they should all have the same number of, you know, beads or discs or whatever for doing the county. That that looks questionable. But you got that right. Look at this guy. What's he playing? That's a marimba or triple? This movie's from 1944. It was during the war, guarding the secrets of a bomb site. This was what, you know, these movies weren't made for me to decode. They were made to propagandize people of that time. And let us, this guy, he's in four or five scenes in this one quick shot of Sherlock Holmes saving the day. And this was filmed during... 1943. Okay, during World pre War II. Premiered in 44. Okay. It, it, I was going to say, it kind of has that wonderful life look to it. Doesn't it kind of have that, like, grandfather, grandfather Heidi said as she ran down the Alpine Mountain. You know, we've seen it all before. <laughs> they love it. Hola, que pasa? Luther, so the director. Huh? Who was the director of that flick? Who got credit? Doesn't matter. It's a Basil Rathbone, Sherlock Holmes, man. And they had they were kicking them out by the you know, two yeah, dozen. Yeah, okay. A lot of stuff going on. This being a cooperative. I'm not sure if I could, you know, this is an old video and stuff, but it's still, you know. Boy, this video about Philadelphia, they just, they're all over the Quakers and what a bunch of hypocrites they turned out to be. You know, Quakerism <clears throat> was a way to make money, you know, just crazy. It seemed as though, yeah, enough of them did well. A significant portion of my youth was spent in Philadelphia, and I was immersed in the stories and legends of the area, even though many of my contemporaries paid little attention to them. In graduate school, he did a little more digging and found out many fascinating facts about the magician of the legends I heard as a child. This is getting interesting, right? Wow. The man I'm referring to was a well-educated German pietist from what is now Switzerland. Actually, this man, most commonly known today as Johannes Kepler, was born in the home of Dracula, Transylvania. He was a radical priest. For those who wish to make the claim that he was America's first Rosicrucian, including the Y-M-C-A. No, it's not that. It's the A-M-O-R-C-A. So we've got that in our back pocket. We can look at this later. They certainly influenced what became to be known as Rosicrucianism, but they were no more Rosicrucian than ancient Jews were Christian because the Christian faith grew out of Judaism. Wow. There's a picture of representation of Johannes. Small band of German pietists who settled in the Wickeshawn Valley in 1694 were initially recruited by a Johann Jacob, J.J. Zimmerman is what he used to like to be called, a former Lutheran minister and professor of a once prestigious Heidelberg University. Disenfranchised by the church because he was a heretic and dismissed from his academic post because he was a crazy person, for his pietist and millennialist beliefs. 
Ooh, they thought that the end of the Golden Age was happening. Religious wars devastated much of Europe throughout the 1600s, particularly what they call now modern-day Germany. There was no idea of that it would be. There was no nation of Germany then. Then the Holy Roman Empire during the Thirty Year War. That's what they call it. Johannes Kepler and his group, born in Transylvania, Lutheran pastor, liberal arts at Nuremberg. He received received a thorough scientific and religious education, fluent German, English, Latin, Hebrew, Greek, used his knowledge for religious study and philosophy. Randy, yes. am I trying to, am I just starting an end time cult? Because I sound like this guy. And it's all about like, oh, it's the end of times. But this is really, this is Jesus. My intent is to glorify his name, not whatever they were talking about. They don't know. He, they didn't even go. They went with the Quaker thing. And that's not really like sticking with the Bible. Yeah. Should that matter? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this you guy know goes, that if, if I would say that, you would say you know it matters because that's all we that's all we've ever cared about. Let me give you a little more background. Although Kepler guided the Pietists to America, he was not the group's original leader. Johannes Zimmermann, a noted mathematician and astronomer, took up mysticism and became convinced that Jesus Christ would descend from the heavens to begin the millennial the millennium in March of 1694. And now I'm assuming he's oblaying in the, uh, not the Gregorian, not the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar. I think he's using that Julian calendar. He was preparing for the second coming. He organized a group of 40 devotees, including himself, to await the return of Christ in the new world, the work that Fabricus and Kelpius published impressed Zimmerman, and he sought out and recruited the aforementioned Johannes Kelpius as his deputy minister. And this is back in the 1600s, Starford cities dealing with the Lapalapane Indians. Under their directions, they settled in the scarcely settled Philadelphia, so it's still the northern rich part of the suburbs that touches the woods. The pietists said they could devote themselves to their souls uninterrupted. But, you know, what it turned out, you know, here they more, let's see, the wilderness, they concluded, provided them with the best environment to receive divine revelation because it's on a ley line in the manner that Moses Elijah had. Furthermore, the port of Philadelphia was near the 40th parallel. Mystics consider 40 to be the perfect number. As Moses spent 40 days in Sinai, Christ wondered for 40 days while fasting for 40 days another time, which is seems like that's divine. <laughs> That's divine. Dutch Quaker. Things from, you know, uh, William Penn, a Dutch Quaker believed to be William Penn's Rotterdam agent, Ben, took an interest in the group and their beliefs and, and just said, here, have 2,400 acres of land in the New World and for 130 pounds, that's some money for their you just pay to get over there? Zimmerman, unexpected death later that year, delayed the group's journey. The lot will slow them down. But they were resolved and convinced by God they were going to America to, to spread their mysticism and wait on the 1711 in the Gregorian calendar to be loosed, found the Freemasons, and we'll find out what they did so much. My goodness, what is this? They talk. You know, they, they got, so this wandering hermits who before, and we'll look at the Wikipedia page, basically, they lived in the caves and prayed. Well, no, they had 
they founded what is still called Germantown. They taught the children. They grew large botanical gardens to, you know, because let the food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And, well, they all, you know, they covered that up with what became the Philadelphia Cricket Club golf course. You know, that's big in Philadelphia, I guess. Makes no mention of the fact that the monks, including Kelpius, made a killing in the local real estate. And that Kelpius went on to win legal suits against him for real estate fraud. Kelpius and his followers performed what many may have been the first chamber music in North America. So it's be, they really don't tell you the whole truth. This guy's getting down to it, man. What do you got, Randy? Well, yeah, you, this is uh, causing me to think of a few things. Have you ever heard that uh, saying or what? You know, WWJD. Sure. What would Jesus yeah. do? Yeah, and uh, you know his, his disciples. Uh, I think you're familiar with uh, those that are considered disciples. But probably could least, name them <laughs> during, uh, or the apostles even uh, during his ministry. Right, but the one apostle that they're they're forgetting is is the Judas, the son of Alphaeus, not Judas Iscariot. You know that they, yeah, they're they're a pretty but they're, honor but they're a band of you know singles. There, it seems as though uh, it, if any were married it, it really doesn't uh, specify uh you know peter and his uh but that was his mother-in-law what well yeah, there there were uh there was a time where paul says are barnabas and i the only ones that are still earning our own living and the other ones are getting paid to take their wives along with them you know as so, far as you know this, and when uh and when I, I don't know where Jesus, you know, gave any advice about uh, when it's, you know, the proper time, you know, to be sure to <clears throat> take out the life insurance on the children and, you know, and, you know, and make sure all your assets are covered. So, you know, some calamity might come along and, you, you know, where you're going to want <clears> to <throat> be sure that you're not going to be vulnerable, you know. So that's what this kind of got me thinking about, you know, what 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 would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? Uh, you know, and everybody has their own, you know, scenario, situation, whether, uh, you know, being healthy, not so healthy. Uh, uh, you, you got, you know, you, you can't be overly insured, I guess. You know, in most cases, you're worth more dead than alive, you know, if you're playing your cards right when it comes to insurance. But uh, that's we what this kind of got thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Glad Life Path 5 found us. Welcome, Ella. We had a great time and a great discussion. Our good friend, uh, Outback John was with, with the show for a, a good spell last night. We were always so happy to have Ella and want everybody to know she is a content provider, as is Luther, and you might want to just jump on there. Evelyn de Rothschild, she has something to do with it. All those, I, you know, I'm drawing a blank on Evelyn right now, but, uh, you know. Yeah. She's on my list of things I'm going to check out because I don't trust Evelyn to Rothschild as far as I can throw her. <laughs> so these guys were making a fortune off the money, you know, and, and here's this thing. They literally believed in the return of Christ was imminent. We're disappointed when the appointed date came and went. And many ended up leaving to live in Germantown. He stayed there with uh, Conrad, died in 1708, 
this was the group that met. You know, I didn't even look up this guy here. They're just going to. But he's the. These the groups had. The woman in the wilderness is a big thing in imagery of the New Testament book of late revelations. Bissell went on to lead the group, founded a similar pietist community in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Huh. Yeah. So anyway, it went on and on. Hey, that's kind of a, a bohemian philosophical. The bohemians, it's... You know, Bohemian Rhapsody, Mama Mia, Mama Mia, let me go. You know, that's that's all part of everybody's common thing. But, you know, you know, the Bohemian <laughs> lifestyle was that mystic lifestyle, was that Quakers were the first, you know, church that said, ah, women pastors, it's fine. And then they went about making money, owning slaves while they're, Doctrine was we are all equal if we're white, you know. Kipris was yeah. a bohemianism. It wasn't sooner, just sooner you get on with it, the sooner you get used to it, right? I guess they they said they had a bohemia, so there was a bohemian. There's bohemian beer, I guess. Uh, huh? The modern term claimed to have been Fire influenced. Food, right? What's that? Well, that's the fire brood. Wasn't that the whole point of uh, pasteurization was for the beer industry, not for the dairy industry? But you got, yeah, and another topic in Bohemia so, in particular. I guess until, you know, they didn't want to stick with the Bible. The Bohemianism goes on in a book that defines seven major qualities, planets, and humoral elemental associations of dry as Saturn, sweet Jupiter, bitter Mars. Love is oh, Venus, if you will. Corpus, Earth, that's a death. Oh, totality of forces awaiting rebirth. Whatever. Glad this one's over. Though I looked that up, I guess. Must have came here. The Rosicrucians are a community of philosophers who study natural law in order to live in harmony with them. Our mission is to provide seekers with the spiritual wisdom necessary to experience their correctedness, connectedness with the miraculous world around us and to develop the mastery of life. S sounds like the promising the world. Mystical power of vowel sounds and mantras that jumped out at me. That, you know, so uh, suspicious in more than one way. How would you develop your intuition, Randy? <laughs> Through prayer, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I have a I, sneaking suspicion. Right? I have a sneaking suspicion. These are a bunch of pervert sex fiends who don't want to <laughs> live by the Bible. And I'm just telling you, that's what I think. So yeah. I was reading this super interesting article, and they mentioned, you know, that the Masons used to call themselves the Hedge. Well, I looked up Hedge Lodge, and all they were trying to do is sell me some things, you know, like, you you live near Alamosa, you should go rent a lodge at the Sand Dunes. And they're like, sure, if I had $117 a night and a ride there, I just might do that. <laughs> Instead, it led me to this article in The Economist, published 2020, Global History of the Freemasons, that's not Paco. So I was reading this before we decided to go live. Since they first came to prominence in the alehouses of the 1700s in London, the Freemasons have proved adept at self-promotion from their blindfolded initiation ceremony, obscure rituals and symbols, and infamous handshake. The organization has grasped the powerful attraction of mystery as a recruiting tool. Can't add much to that. I mean, they, they nailed those guys, right? <laughs> yeah, if indeed, yeah, it's an accurate, yeah. 
characterization, and I believe they, it is. So I just bought this book by John Dickey. I want to read it. You want to read yeah. this this first part for me there, Brother Randy? Founded in London in 1717 as a way of binding men in fellowship. Binding Remain them in fellowship? Why would they want to do that? <laughs> Because that's what it's about, eh? Freemasonry proved so addictive that within two decades, it had spread across the globe. Yeah, you said it. Masonic influence became pervasive. Under George Washington, the craft became a creed for the new American nation. Masonic networks held the British Empire together. Under Napoleon, the craft became a tool of authoritarianism and then a cover for revolutionary conspiracy. <laughs> Both the Mormon Church and the Silicon Mafia <laughs> owe their origins to Freemasonry. How you pay back a debt, you owe them something. Hey, can you keep going? Because you're killing it. Well, yeah. yet the Masons were as feared as they were influential. In the eyes of the Catholic Church, Freemasonry has always been a den of devil worshipers. Takes one to no one. For Hitler, Mussolini, and Franco, the lodges spread the diseases of pacifism, socialism, and Jewish influence. So had to be crushed. They can anybody ever fall for it that you heard of, <laughs> or that you're related to? Anybody yeah. you're related to fall for this nonsense? Well, at the time, I didn't know him or know it, but yeah, as uh, information becomes available, <laughs> I, I do recognize uh, some names that. Yeah, are in your family tree. I was just, okay. You don't need to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his mother, his mother was that skank of a Jerome. So yeah, that would be the. Time. Oh, your aunt, your great aunt. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Come I, on, man. Yeah, this is this sentence mother. is going to kill them. They're going to. They are not going to believe the circle the that the free story yokes together. Winston Churchill and Walt Disney, Wolfgang Mozart and Shaq O'Neill, Benjamin Franklin and Buzz Aldrin. We didn't land Richard on the moon. Kipling and Buffalo Bill Cody, Duke Ellington and the Duke of Wellington. Duke That's of Wellington. Way. If my, you know, Interesting Be names that it's uh, yoking together. And the whole thing that within two decades it had covered the enclosed dome earth. And what did they what did they leave out? It, I think they left out that it wasn't only an organization, it was people that were bound by a death vow. That's a big part of this whole thing, you know. No, see, I almost, I thought the first Duke of Wellington, or maybe it was the second. One of these guys became King Charles the Second. I thought a Duke of, but anyway, he was a big friend of uh, William Penn, so, or at least his dad or something was. This William Penn, whew, crazy. I bet I don't even have him pulled up anymore. Duke of Wellington. John Dickey's craft is an enthralling exploration of the world's most famous and misunderstood secret brotherhood, a movement that not only helped forge modern society, but had substantial contemporary influence with millions and millions and millions of people. Whoa, look at that. Where did that picture come from? 
Oh, that's the book. That's the cover of the book. That's someone's rendition of not Paco. <laughs> Francis Daniel Pretorius. Never heard of him until this morning. That's Was a German-born educator, poet, I'm going to put that and leave out lawyer, and public official. He was the founder of Germantown. So William Penn, after supposedly coming to the United States for a couple of years, was called back to Philadelphia where somebody said, I own Philadelphia, you don't. So William Penn had to go back and he got caught up with his friends there. Never went back to Pennsylvania, but they still have his statue. Daniel, Daniel Pistorius, he took over. Founder of Germantown, now part of Philadelphia. First permanent German-American settlement and the gateway for subsequent orphan trains from immigrants from Germany. It's just, I'm trying to be provocative. No, I, why not? Yeah. Danny Pretorius was born in a Franciscan monk town, probably Star Fortish, to a prosperous Lutheran family where he received a gymnasium education. Okay. Moves to Philadelphia with a group of Mennonites who, mm. pietists, Quakers, the so-called original 13, well, including uh, Abraham Apotegraf, cousin of William Penn. Well, that William Penn should be wearing armor. That's Quaker Oats. Dang, so they're everywhere. Very progressive, huh? As far as mystic. The influence? mystic, you know, as progressive is that they could just preach all this equality, own slaves, and make money like it's going out of style. And anyway, they have some insurance, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Pastorius took a passage, he boarded the ship in 1863, got bought 15,000 acres, got started a little colony. This Rittenhouse Square, that's a big part of their history. And, and so much of it's fake. Carl? No, probably not. Any <laughs> relation to Carl. You're talking about the young man from Kenosha. <laughs> well, he, he was in Kenosha. He was actually from Illinois. And because of his age and, you know, and the weaponry and, yeah, it's. It's a story. Some people are familiar. Back during the, the Floyd riots of the USA. Uh, yeah. So but, he uh, opened up a co-educational school in 1702. We won't forget the Rittenhouse thing. I, I'm surprised I pulled that thing out of my Kenosha thing because I remember you telling me specifically <laughs> about that guy. That was like five years ago, man. Anyhow, yeah, back during the pandemic and yeah, a lot of odd stuff going on. Also, Germantown looks kind of Irish, I think. They're mm -hmm. at least they're seal. I mean, hey, a redheaded German that, that's not suspicious. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Danny lived there. George Washington slept there. Anti-slavery. We got a lot of stuff to go on. We can always come back to these guys because this isn't going anywhere because it's the Rosicrucians and then are the modern day John Burt Society. I'm going to leave that open. In 1688, the Germantown Quaker petition against slavery. First protest ever well, against en against enslavement of Africans made by the original body, the relig a religious body in the 13 colonies. 15 there were. One well, state. In, in, I mean, it's, it's, if it's anti-slavery, it should be against, you know, anyone that has slaves, whether whether they're from Africa or not. But, you know, that's just... 
my take. I uh, don't know if that's how they look at it. Clearly a highly controversial statement. Not <laughs> yours. This just article continues, although yours could be considered controversial. Friends forwarded up the hierarchical chain of their administrative structure, monthly, quarterly, and yearly meetings without either approving or rejecting it, the petition effectively disappeared for 150 years into Philadelphia yearly meetings, capricious archives. So they only know this is true because after 150 years, they say, here's what everybody said and did during that time period. I think they're lying because they say, yeah, here we go again with the, you know, upon rediscovery in 1844. And remember, 1848, supposedly the, the entire United States was worked into a frenzy because they all thought there was going to be a rapture. And that's what spawned the Great Awakening and the Seventh-day Adventists and blah, 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 blah. Well, well yeah, that brings... A question to my mind when it comes to common sense do you need some sort of normalization to happen to have common right. sense yeah, but it, it's all that play <laughs> the normal schools come into play they every you know, there's there's four or five people right now listening that know exactly what you're talking about how they founded the normal school so they could tell us what's normal and why we should all believe in the globe and the trinity and the book of <laughs> enoch and feminism and that the the well, man and time. man wife is over just anything goes now anything except a man and a wife raising children to glorify god that's that's got to stop to them yeah. no, why do they keep throwing in the mennonites i you know i I know that there's some bad Mennonite groups on the board on the border of Mexico and Texas and New Mexico, you know, selling the meth. But most Mennonites, are, I mean, my uncle was a Mennonite, and he was, you know, they were more progressive, you know, than the Amish, you know, right? Or yeah. are more progressive than Amish, but. Uh, Right, yeah, I sure. I much prefer sure the, uh, not, not everything. Right, I totally prefer, you know, the Mennonite, the 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 whole. Uh, but then the the Amish, you know, you you can't even use a button. The Hutterites, the Hutterites and the Mennonites, that's the way to go, you know. Uh, why not use electricity? It's free, you know. But the plain dresses, I mean, that there's how can you argue with that? What's the problem with it? I mean, people don't have to have men, you don't have to wear your beard and shave your mustache like that. That you know, some of that's it's crazy, you know. But she, she's pretty proud of her bonnet. That's that's Reba. So that's the uniform of the Salvation Army. Ooh. Old River Brethren. They got a cape dress. That's unnecessary. I never saw some well, boys. But... Spenders. Yes, yes. When I took over as athletic director, the Christian Liberty Academy Chargers girls volleyball wore culottes that went down to their calf. That's yeah. how that's how strict we were. Right. <laughs> I, are, I, lo I loosened that up quite a bit, but it took. And the, those took technically are what you'd say huge bell bottom shorts. Yes, right? they are. In the Navy, that's what they look like, big sailor pants. <laughs> hey, see, there's some Hutterites. Now, I think that uh, it even the girls that tie their it behind their hair, it's still cool. You don't have to tie it around your neck. But the Hutterites and the Mennonites, if you, if, you know, yeah. 
did I? They weren't on the menu. I don't know where that came from, but this guy, German Pietist, had this crazy scheme based on Revelation 12, verse 6, that anticipated the advent of a heavenly kingdom somewhere in the wilderness that year. Kelpius felt that the 1600s, the province of Pennsylvania, given its reputation for toleration, can't we, toleration at the edge of a, who are they trying to, I mean, we know better. Don't even let this sink in one bit. There was no barely settled wilderness about that area at all. It was a big star fort city. Or are they uh, uh, implying something to do with the na the natives or something? Uh, the Lapalapani, yeah, we'll look at them maybe. I don't know. The Wickasha, the Wishahickon Creek. That's that Kelpius Cave. We can't get, you know. Of course, this is all they show is like, that's where he, you know, that's where he prayed. Maybe it was a root cellar. They had a Star Ford City going on. And, oh, this mystic. I remember studying this guy before, Jacob Balheim, German philosopher. Well, he didn't come up this morning, so yeah. we'll keep it open. Welcome. This, they have, they have, uh, Recently, reorganized the uh, Rosicrucian Band of the Kelpius Society. Johannes Kelpius led a band of European separatists and tolerant, tolerant people to the banks of the Wishahickon in what is now Philadelphia's Fairmont Park, where they got the cricket club set up. In 1694, the group came at the invitation of supposed Christian and man of honor, William Penn, seeking religious freedom and awaiting the millennium. We've heard all that. Little remains of the settlement today. Kelpius Society now is a nonprofit tax exempt, and by that they mean a 503CB, whose goal is to research the community, restore the site, spread the group's original message of peace and brotherhood of all. Does that mean they're going to go capture some people and call them slaves? <laughs> <laughs> Motives and intent. Yeah. I was mad this picture didn't get any bigger. I wanted to look at it. Oh, I ran this guy out of time. So here's that town. Am I saying it right? Well, there's a few rail lines there, wasn't it? They got the, it, well, I clicked on it and we already talked about it. Here's where I first ran into the trackless trolley. What did oh. we find? It? Yeah, yeah. Remember, we were going to talk about that. It's connected electrically, but then it has some sort of ability to just, yeah, just cruise around, yeah. Hey, this is the company that FDR took over by force. It had been established in 1902. It was the first trackless trolley service. Maybe it's not the first trackless trolley, but it was the first trackless trolley, which is a bus in Philadelphia, 1902, merger of several then independent transit companies operating within the city and its environs. They could be more vague. Were they using trackless trolleys? So is this just something where to come from? We're going for the history and you're giving me more vague. Mm -hmm. Of the more than 300 trolley bus systems operating worldwide, as of 2011, Philadelphia's is the second oldest exceeded in longevity. Can you believe this? By Shanghai, trackless. You know, they have normal schools in China. Oh, thanks. 
three Northwest Philadelphia trolley bus lines operating out of Frankfurt and these other ones always existed in isolation from each other. There was never any trackless route or non-revenue to wire connection between the two, those two networks. In addition, from 1941, when the United States was still under apartheid law, to 1961, when we were going to, you know, thinking about letting blacks vote, there were actually three disconnected trackless networks in the city. That's so suspicious. So, you know, we do, so what they're basically saying is this town had this type of you could haul in an Elon Musk Tesla bus number 66 of the city line practically for free. These buses are still in service today because they were so well built that if you keep them in the tires and you don't, you there's a mad rush to move back to these trackless electric buses. Yeah, proven, yeah, city transit or whatever. Yeah. Why not? Route 66? That was seen better days, huh? That yeah, yeah. still out there rolling, but you know, that's 1978. You know, they're probably going like, "Where did we put that that old uh, ACF Brill TC44?" Number 66 again. Are we are we seeing a pattern? It looks like a little different body style, but it's it is. Different. But the other one they showed, you know. That's 66 Frankfurt Avenue. I'm just saying on the top of these buses, I didn't look at that one. Yeah, that, that that's other 60, one. That's the newer 60, style appeared no, to be sporting air conditioning. No, I don't mean year. I'm showing you that there, oh, everything I, is the 66. Oh, so what are you? Yeah. Are you making fun of me? Huh? <laughs> yeah. A trackless trolley. Here's your trackless trolley pin. The PTS, PTC, you're going to think that's probably like Philadelphia trolley bus network, right? System, but it's a C. You're going to be so surprised when you find out what this actually, what does this mean? Philadelphia Transportation Company. This was taken over, established in January 1st, 1940. Was that when FDR grabbed it? Yeah, I know. It operated the citywide bus trolley, trackless trolley, now part of the Patco speed line. It had to be more. Oh, this is where I got that section, you know, about, you know, they, even the Wikipedia has to kind of drop the hints that was the United States really like South Africa apartheid? And when they passed the laws in uh, 1944 that were not going to be apartheid. And well, in 1944, during the World War II, honkies, crackers, white PTC workers, I'm using derogatory, mm -hmm. engaged in a wildcat strike. I don't know what, I mean, a strike's a strike, right? aimed at preventing the promotion of African-American employees to conductor and other positions like what, dishwasher? The strike ended when FDR said, you know what, we'll take over from here. And you ha that's the only way the Wildcat strikers were going to give them a job. You know, it, well, it had to be. You, doesn't that remind you of the traffic controllers of Reagan? Doesn't that count? <clears throat> Uh, oh, yeah. 1983 or something there. Fired him. They went on yeah. strike and he fired him and moved in ended. military. Yeah, that ended any union organization. So movement. Yeah. Nothing That's why the Democrats keep as the the National Education Association and their teachers unions. as They're, they're like those are government workers that the only union people left enough to keep them at their 40 percent 
mark of where they're always going to get 40% of the votes. Like the yeah, Republicans well, have a. And now there was more recently, wasn't that when the rail workers and then didn't Biden do something? Wasn't that within the last calendar year, wasn't it? I'm not going down that road of politics because I don't know what, what <laughs> you're talking about. I know they have a lot of trouble on the border. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, there was a big fire there in Palestine, Ohio. Or Oh, uh, I do remember that. The toxic chemicals. <laughs> what a setup. Yeah. That was all 9-11 yeah. all over it. Oh, yeah. memory stuff. You know, you get yeah. fires in California, then in Hawaii, and then in Panhandle of Texas. And yeah, short memory. This is that person that built the transistor radio by clipping a wire to a tree branch. Austin Lawrence wanted to say to you. Hmm? Is there a video I can watch that summarizes why 9-11 was the pivot point that we talk about? So I wanted to, I wanted to get that before we forget it. <laughs> it was huge event. If you know, for, again, with them that have such a short memory, yeah, you might want to revisit that. Well, why don't you, why don't you wax an elephant on it? <laughs> Oh, how uh, travel was prior yeah, how, to 9 11? Well, well how, how, why, why do we, you know, <laughs> why is that such a big deal to us? Why have you supported them financially for decades? You still do? <clears throat> yeah, because it's it has, a big, big deal. It changed it the has, world. It has something to do with truth, you know, in particular, and physics, you know. And those are only the reasons and now how it affected the banking systems of the world. The United States stepped in within two days with the Patriot Act. Pull your head out of the United States uh, naval of the world and realize that all of the other world's governments had those boom and they were in place too. And everything changed. Not only like, ooh, we had, surprising how they had the Patriot Act waiting, and it was 14,000 pages or some, but whatever, baloney, I'm making up a number, you know. Yeah, it, it was uh, even more in your face than the pandemic, you know, technically, because of how it all went down, you know, the whole, you know, is, is this real? You know, are we live? You know, because they're doing the war games. At the same time, you know, that uh, the alleged uh, terrorists that took over, you know, the flights. I mean, it, it, the whole thing is, it's like a, the brand new moonwalk is what it is. Uh, okay, I, I was I was off by a massive <laughs> <laughs> point. I, I had, you know... 355 pages, but the Patriot Act does make you a terrorist for using cash. Thank you, SmartPod. Thank you. Yeah, as far as, you know, again, in your face and uh, deja vu all over again, that was a huge reset because the whole scam is what, you know, not just that, it, that's the war to the mid e Middle East, you know, and you know, they get credit, you know, where uh, Osama bin Laden, CIA, you know, again, the American public is so dumbed down stupid, you know, they can't find their ass with their hand tied behind their back. And it's just a reality. You know? And it's not there. And it's it's th that has been perpetrated upon them. They didn't ask for the poison in their yummy Snicker bar. I thought, oh. uh, uh, Ella, are you still here? Are you going to send me a link or something so that we can see this video that with this bohemian jewelry? Because that sounds interesting to me, and I've, I've got a little bit of time. Michael Jackson was the moonwalk, Randy. Come on.
getting what I'm referring to, but whatever. <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? They went to the moon, eh? <laughs> I have a bridge for sale also. So the, the executive order number was 9459. Hey, that's my phone number. <laughs> Possession and control of the Secretary of War. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States, and they want to make sure, you know, that should be enough, but they want to include the act of August 29, 1916. So we read some of that. They're, they're just taking over. They're going to go over and take possession and assume control of the whole trackless trolley, Philadelphia Transportation Company. This guy, he might have been in a wheelchair, but he was not afraid to take over some. I mean, he would just take over. I mean, it's mine now. Hey, you heard you got some gold at home. Send it to me in Washington or you're going to jail. I mean, I heard he did stuff like that. This seemed like an interesting website. Presidency.University of California, Santa Barbara. Back to the trolleys, the PCC. Oh, I almost ruined the big surprise. Going back to 1938, place, lines, operator. Philadelphia, Kenosha, El Paso, South Holland, Massachusetts, Dallas started. So these things, they're trying to get these babies up and running again. Where were they? Uh, these are just things you have to realize. This is, if, did they buy them new or did they get them used? Montreal, United States, you know, delivered in 44, abandoned after 1958, one year after. Now they've got these purchased again. So we're, we're seeing it everywhere. There's the Mexico all across the United States, Yugoslavia, Spain, Egypt, all getting trackless trolleys. And even I think China, didn't it say, had the oldest one? Two hundred. 244 PCC rapid transit cars that you know what the big takeaway is you know what uh, it's showing it's on the screen right now what PCC stands for presidential conference committee car that is it's the PCC is the presidential commission set up to take over by the United States government in World War II. When we want to take over the trackless trolleys, we're going to use something called the President's Conference Committee. It's a tram design that was first built in the United States. Who calls the tram designs the President's Conference Committee? RJ, go, man. This is crazy, right? Well, that was after, wasn't that an executive order? Wasn't that how it was done? You know, they said it was through per constitution, but if you call that per, you know, executive orders, uh, that's... Hey, that just means they've got... That's their reminder that they have machine guns. They were very... This is a retro design. The Muni PCC, I did read about this because they put these windows in they spared no cost because they said, darn, we're going to pack so many people in this bus that, as we speak, is almost lasted 100 years, still an electric car better than Elon Musk is promising them the world. This electric bus carried 100 people for 100 years, and they even put in windows because they said, we know there's going to be 70 of this 100 people standing, and we want them to be able to see out the window also while they're yep. standing. 
How conscientious do you have to be? Standing window room. It's Love in it. the details. There you have it. Whoa. Oh, don't worry. This one's turning. I thought there was going to be a big collision right there. Whew. Is that well, numbers? Are, well, these are not trackless. They're, they're, that one is. Those other ones look like. Well, it's still electric. Yeah, it's electric, but it, it's on a track, isn't it? Or what? That, that that's definitely a track. Good yeah, eye yeah. there. Good eye. Yeah. Good, good catch. And same way where them two look. Oh, like, it's you know, been converted. This has been. It. This is a PCC two, three two six three. So this had been converted to rail, but it was a bus. This was a bus. Okay. And now they're so desperate for transportation, they're using these 100-year-old vehicles. This is uh, actually older because it doesn't have the standing room only. The people right. didn't complain. I can't see out the window. Good catch. This is another one. See, that's back on the road again. You know, what you need is these extending things so this thing can swerve way out there and still stay connected. You could, you know... <laughs> You could yeah, play with yeah. people, like cut them off, and, you know, like ah, just kidding. Ha <laughs> ha. There's another converted one. That's it. That's in Kenosha, where oh, Kyle yeah. Rettenhouse had the. He was like, so. There's another one. You could put that on the rails if you want. Mm -hmm. Downtown Loop got the standing. Windows, yeah, so it was after 1932, I think. So they're bringing these out of retirement today. This is all going crazy. Where's this thing back? When we talking about the Rosicrucians, how bad they are. So anyway, these series of upgraded PCC streetcars around Transylvania, I mean Pennsylvania. It's called the SEPTA subway surface trolley lines that's what they changed it to in the 1980s just more cool pictures not the wireless radio again because it's so confusing electromagnetic induction more faraday he go i can i can do everything you know Maxwell equations, they're fake, they're stupid. They just faked everything, all based on theoretical predictions of electromagnetic waves. And didn't it just happen to be right during the Civil War when everything was so confusing and we were finally going to free the slaves? But wait a minute, we had racist eugenic laws until World War II? What? Oh my goodness. I just noticed I was looking ahead. I only have one Bible tab pulled up. Did you see any of this thing last night about the indigenous people? No, I missed that. There's no such thing. You know, everybody at one time, no matter what tribe they are, no matter how you dress these people up, they are related to the people that at one time had the gospel preached to them because this globe type world was, no, this water globe, enclosed water globe type world was turned upside down and the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. So, no one can tell me any longer. I'm so sick of it that, no, we've been here since the beginning of time doing this. Bullshit. You've, your, your relatives heard the truth. If you went back to doing this, it's because you've been taught to say, we're original when the word aboriginal means not original. As somebody refreshed my memory the last night. These are just regular people that said, now you live like this. Now you dress up in these clothes. We're taking your picture. Here's your new customs. 
Here's your new custom. You do this, you do that, which is why we get the Navajo and the Inau, you know, saying this is our traditional dance. Well, at one time, your relatives were all informed about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you never, ever were alone, all alone. And you didn't know, and there was this, you know, you're related to people who knew. If you went back to that, it's because the people who are trying to force the renaissance, the great awakening, the discussions that brought us, whether it should be Republican or Democrat, you know, that we could argue about until Satan comes back. That's in play. And it, that's what they want you to talk about, not scripture, not obeying scripture, not, hey, we got you figured out. They don't care if a few people are on the narrow road. They've got the masses they want. Yeah, yeah, strength in numbers. Great. And there's going to be, according to scripture, to everyone studying the new millennial reign theories and theology, something bad happening, but they don't want to believe it's going to happen in the United States. It, it, but it is going to happen. There's no more time for fun and games like we can go to the North Pole. That's as crazy as saying, I'll, I'm going to fly a rocket up there and crash it into the firmament and prove that we're not going to the moon. You're going to waste your money. You're going to prove we, they didn't go to the moon and nobody's going to care. Still. Right. They, you, you, they're, we've proved it a million times. A, a million people have proved it a million times. We're not on a spinning globe. Right. Yeah. But, no. yeah. Who has time for that nonsense? Yeah. Oops. Not sharing. <laughs> so if you didn't see last night's presentation, I wonder if I should just show it because and, and we can do the stop and drop commentary on it but i can just go over it with you from daniel but it went in from the beginning i think i am going to try to uh pull it up and, and play it and get your opinion and that way you won't have to watch the whole thing again This won't take but a second. Now I just have to jump to the end. If, why does it keep opening up to the same thing? At least it's not starting. Uh... At least it's not starting that echo thing. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I can't hear anything other than you speaking. So right, yeah, I, yeah I'm almost there. Dang, man, that it's that that looks tough. That's a tough life. That's a place you might want to visit. But if you grew up there, and you said this is my home. You'd think nothing of it. You'd think like, heck yeah, it'd be a great place to hide. Just hope they run away and don't dig in. Look at that smile, the way it's set off by that hat. Let's just see where I took this. You know, and what the Lord showed me that we needed some Just sort feel of free to jump in at any time and stop me because this goes on for 20, you know, almost 20 minutes. But an abomination of desolation. We needed a time frame. And it's not like I'm trying to take you to the North Pole. There I go again. All we know is that, you know, this is a very confusing thing, you know, in the first year of Darius the Mede. Daniel, 
you know, stood up to strengthen and protect him. Now then, I'll tell you the truth. Three more kings will arise in Persia, then a fourth far richer than all others. And we know about their life. Okay, so I read most of this and refresh their memory. I'm going to get to the end because I stayed a long time on 11, but I thought I was being very clever. And, and I think I was. I felt so anointed and blessed and everything. And last night, and then I woke up and this all fell. I feel like just was like God prepared it for me. Now, doing as their large, nothing about the North Pole or anything. Courage of the South. Those who eat from his provisions will seek to destroy him. The two kings, with their hearts bent on evil, will speak lies at the same table, but to no avail. That's probably happening in those mafia worlds right now. Then he will turn back and rage against the Holy Covenant. With flattery, this is something that I have to be aware of, you have to be aware of. So many people come on, they think, oh man, Alan Paco. You got it nailed. And then next thing you know, they're going like, except you still like the Apostle Paul. Now I hate you. Boy, I fell, fell for that one too many times. Let's get right down to it. Then the king will do as he pleases and will exalt and magnify himself above every god. He will speak monstrous things against the god of gods, El Elyon. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been decreed must be accomplished. He will show no regret for the gods, no regard for the gods of his fathers, nor for the one desired by women, Isis, nor for any other god, because he will magnify himself above all, and, and in their place he. I just have to stop it, you know, but that one thing where he said, the one that is magnified by women, you know, you just don't think about that. It's like, it has to be Isis or Diana. I mean, uh, something, but, you know, that's programmed where we, you know, we don't think about it. We don't talk about it. The heart of the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god. So just a couple more seconds, a uh, chapter of 11. Fortresses. That's that, that how you pay for the military industrial complex, I guess, that God's got to get paid. A God his fathers did not know. With gold, silver, precious stone, and riches, he will attack the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign God. And will greatly honor those who acknowledge him, making them rulers over many and distributing the land for a price. Have you ever wondered where the landed gentry? That's like William Penn. Where you know theme, that whole motif. That oh yes, I give you, grant you this land in million acres in Georgia or a million acres in Mexico, and you just have to give me ten percent, and everybody will be fine. You can just work all those slaves to death if you want back to the king of the at the time of the end the king of the south will go to the north pole no, i'm just kidding i'm trying to for me daniel is seeing i went these backwards visions. to daniel 10 <coughs> don't be afraid daniel for from the first day that you purpose to understand and to humble yourself before god your words have been heard and I have come in response to them. Thank you. This is Michael. However, the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Three weeks. He came in response. But this spiritual war, when it gets tough, things get tough. And you think it's in heaven, they're just playing harps? However, the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen 
to your people in the latter day for the vision concerns those days while he was speaking these words. Uh, that sounds pretty important. It really does. Because it's, you know, he had been left there with the kings of Persia fighting for 21 days. Sometimes we take our mind off the spiritual that's going on and the fact that we're only object lessons and we think, you know, maybe we've done enough. For, you know, I don't know. I don't want to put thoughts in, you know, I don't understand, you know, myself. So how can I understand other people? What are you thinking so far with this, Randy? It's anything jumping out at you? Well, I believe it. Yeah, it's pertinent information, you know. Well, I want to remind them before we go on at verse 14, the, this way up high, someone from heaven's visiting Daniel. He goes, now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the latter days for the vision concerns those days. To me, I set my face towards the ground and became speechless. And you will too. I have. And suddenly one with the likeness of a man touched my lips. No, that, that never yeah. happened to me. And I opened my mouth and said to the one standing before me, my Lord, because of the vision, I am overcome with anguish and I have no strength. How can I, your servant, speak with you, my Lord? Now I have no strength, nor is there any breath left in me. Wow. Again, the one with the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. Do not be afraid, you who are highly precious, he said. Peace be to you. Be strong. Be very strong. As he spoke with me, I was strengthened. Speak, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. Do you know why I have come to you? He said, I must return at once to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. Yet no one has the courage to support me against these except Michael, your prince. Wow. Exciting. I should say so. This is uh, only going to get more crazy. Exciting. Oh, my goodness. I'm going backwards again. That's okay. We're going to end up going back, back, forward. Back forward. <laughs> so these all that 70 week stuff. I just wanted to let you know that that's all coming in right there. You know? No one understand this. From the issuance of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince. Now, everybody always tells me, you can't use a day year. Well, you guys can. You do. All you dispensationalists and everybody else do, you take these seven weeks and these 62 weeks and you say that's years. So I have some advice for you. Would you hush your mouth, please? Or at least don't hold me to a standard that you don't use. Because everybody uses the day year principle as long as it doesn't say the day and the night. And then you know it's just days, straight days. And after those 62 weeks of the 490 years, whatever whatever the math worked out. I thought I would bad Messiah the will cut of off and have nothing. Then the principle of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. And until the end, there will be war. Desolations have been decreed. And he will confirm a covenant with many for one meek within the middle of that week. He will put an end to the sacrifice. That's a one-time thing. And he'll put an end to the sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of the temple will come the abomination that causes the desolation until the decreed destruction is poured out upon them. I told you we could go back forward. 
you remember, we just did 11, 10, and 9. That's almost better to do it 9, 10, and 11 since we knew what was going to happen anyway. That's why it's good to have the book. Super context. You can't get a context really in two verses. Somebody can't talk to you for a half hour and tell you, see, I just showed you these verses from Daniel 9. Somebody did and said, and you should fund my trip to the North Pole. And this was about three months ago now, and there's no trip to the North Pole coming. And nor will well, what you just read, you know, that's why that's when you poo pooed then saying, This is a go ahead. He's well, Matthew, you know, Matthew 24, verse 15, but you know, what you just covered there in the New Testament, it takes you back also. You know, but this is Jesus speaking. When he says, I'm referring to the book of Daniel, when he talks about the abomination, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, anyone who reads this should understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they don't even like the scripture that much. Some of them hate the apostle Paul, and Jesus picked him personally. He's not going in three months. He's going yeah, to be. And they don't person. like to hear what Jesus, Jesus you know. Yeah. At that thing. time, so you remember, <coughs> we're picking up at the end of verse 11. At that time, Michael, the great prince, remember they were fighting like crazy. 21 days, this is this is insanity. It's the very end. There's going to be a time of distress, the likes of which will not have occurred from the beginning of nations. Who's trying to deceive the nations, form the nations to do it? Got to have the nations. To get to, to where they can think they're going to be successful. The angels might have been worried. I doubt if El Elyon, the Holy, the, you know, God Most High Spirit was worried. But they were worried. We should be worried about getting bought out of the book of life or some crazy thing like that, you know. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book. Same with us. And many who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, but others to shame and everlasting contempt. That's what, you know, they're talking about at that time. Then the wise will shine like the brightness of heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. And I think some of you guys are well on that path. Because, I mean, they seem pretty nice. Verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up these words and seal the book until the end of the time. Many will roam to and fro, and knowledge will increase. Then I, Daniel, looked and saw two others standing there, one on the bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man dressed in fine linen, who was above the waters of the river? How long until the fulfillment of these wonders? The man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, raised his right hand. And his left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time and times and half a time. He's usually considered three and a half years. But when the power of the holy people has been shattered, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked the second time, Lord, what will be the outcome of these things? Go on your way, Daniel, he replied, for the words are closed up and sealed until, well, how will we know it's until the end of the time when many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue acting wickedly. When, how will we know? None of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. Well, we have the, okay, back from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished. It was a pretty solid prophet who predicted that the whole temple's going away. Not one stone would be left on top of another. Uh, the Romans did it. And when they had a, their habit is whenever they conquered the city, they would go into their temple and say, I, you know, because they believed they were incarnate gods. Ta-da. That's it. It was the abomination and the desolation that was set up. There will be 1,290 years. That's these day years. I'll win this argument if you guys want to do it. 
But we <laughs> just like in math, you reduce the thousand because they added the thousand. We we've already done the thousand years of the golden age past, the exact one thousand that word cilia in Greek means ten cubed. So ten times ten times ten. It's exactly I kind of wrapped it up. That's what I was talking about last night. This morning, it was just more of the the dealio with uh, you know the trackless trolley. It's the Rosicrucians. It's you know, I I simply feel that. You know, we're on the right track. You know, it's, this is going to, you know, we're warning the right people. We're saying the right things that we won't regret when we're judged in heaven. You know, it's time to wake up. We were fooled. Now you're fooled. It's not a simulation, people. It's not that, that Christ is in your brain. If his spirit's written on your heart, you're going to know it and act like it. So people don't know about the 1,000 year past reign. Do they turn days into years in Daniel to explain? Yeah, the, the uh, dispensationalists use those. That's when they consider the, uh, the 69 weeks, the 70 weeks with one held back. The They, they count that as the time from the dedication of the second temple until the arrival of Jesus Christ. And then that last, you know, uh, seven years is the three and a half years of his ministry. And then three and a half years until Rome takes it over. But yeah, that that's the whole situation. But everybody has the day for a year in prophecy at some point in their eschatology. What are you looking up? Yeah, it's not a well. I, I found it. You know, when you were talking about something about the stars or something, and I clicked, and I thought I know Paul wrote something. And, I, and I'm not, I wasn't sure, you know, I know about the text and uh, and it's just factual uh, stuff. And then I, now I found it in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, particularly, you know, beginning at, you know, verse 35 through uh, 44. And it's... Uh, and enter at least uh what chapter did you say it was 15 first corinthians chapter 15 beginning at verse 35 well i'm not seeing a i'm not seeing a book of hezekiah so i don't what what are you talking about first hezekiah chapter 15 i'm teasing you here we go let's take a look at it <laughs> that was the worst yeah <laughs> huh? I might be mumbling, but I maybe I am misunderstood. Where, 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 what did you say it was that the sun has one degree? Verse forty-one. Where were we? Well, I'm I'm just saying to read. You know, what got me thinking was what you were saying about the stars, and you know, and that's uh is verse forty-one. But yes, yeah, star you know, differs from star. We're still looking at the, these things are crazy that the moon is its own separate light. Okay. Yes, we accept it. We believe it. That's weird. You know, because the way light works now, I wish I didn't study light so much and know about propagation and wave, you know, arcs, straight lines, polarized light, the double slit experiment, because it's, well, ah. And this all has to do with Paul explaining you know, how the dead right. rise and, you know, the body and, you know, the, being the seed and, you know, it's, uh, you know, corruption and, and raised incorruptible. Or, you know, it's all, that's the text of what these facts he's telling. 
you know, to, in the explanation of, 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 uh, well, my whole my whole explanation of why the rocks are crying out and that they're reserved in judgment is is it hinges on this section of that not all flesh is the same. Well, human flesh is reserved in judgment by the glittering sword. It it you know it goes on to say men have one kind of flesh, animals have another. It explains all that. Verse forty picks it up. There are also heavenly bodies. Their bodies, they can fight. They may not have flesh, but what will be like them, Jesus could eat fish, touch my side. You automatically know jujitsu, earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is to one degree like the, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Verse 42 says, now this is where, you know, so it will be with the reserved stones. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. What? is sown is perishable it is raised imperishable you seed you're a filter whether you're the, uh, an orange seed and a pear seed could be planted next to each other there's no doubt they're not going to grow you know you're a seed and i don't want to extrapolate it to the genos and saying oh he's all into the seed thing no i'm into you are a seed and until you die, you will not know what you what it's like. It is sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body through the process of metamorphosis. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. The first man, Adam, it's written, became a living being. Jesus Christ, considered in this term, the last Adam was a life-giving spirit. Could be it's written on your heart. The spiritual, however, was not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man was of the dust. That that's a that's that takes an hour and a half in itself, brother Andy, just to get into that part. And then just, you have the secret at fifty-one. Yes, after we're burying likeness of that earthly one, it, it, folks. There's a mystery. What is it? Is it that the Jewish people at the time of Christ had misunderstood the Trinity? Or was the mystery that the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles, it was the, the gospel was preached to a Gentile that all of the nations would be blessed through a seed, his seed, a Gentile seed, before he was circumcised, before there was the law. And the mystery is that the last is first, the first was last, the, the Gentiles and the Jews are saved by the blood of Jesus. Not that there's a trinity with the Isis mother figure and the infant and the, you know, go, go ahead, Randy, bail me out here, man. Well, God is spirit, so yeah, that's uh, it's it may seem confusing. It it shouldn't be confusing. No, it but, shouldn't. Uh, I re it, once we understood the grammar that they were talking to them, then that Paul was saying, "I'm not." He's not talking to me. We're to interpret a book that was written to them. A lot of people understand that, and a lot of people teach it. Uh, yeah. And they, they and want it. It comes down to probably a single word as far as uh, any attempt in pleasing, you know, Father God, that, you know, the Spirit would would be summed up in with obedience, you know, in my mind. got to keep going man i was kind of reading there for a second you know i i think that the the whole situation is that when you're right you just have to be right and stick with it because it's going to be the bible i know people are tired of talking about dogma doctrine that divides but unless we embrace division do what the bible says there's going to be like a narrow road somewhere in the back of my mind wondering if 
you know, if I'm directing people to the right way to it, are they understanding that it is, it, it's looking like because of certain circumstances and the stones crying out, here's how you get gold. Here's how we should read these scriptures and everybody buying into it, except for the, the parts about we should walk a little bit stricter according to the Bible. And then it's like, whoa, ho, ho. And, you know, I, I think that it's taken a while, but I think I'm denting their arguments and that they're going to realize, okay, I'm going to keep teaching what I'm teaching. And on February 4th, something big happened. Something's changing. They can stress all they want about this uh, eclipse. Yeah, we're not getting raptured, but something weird's going to go on. Our economics across the fruited plain are damaged beyond repair. We're not warning you because we're trying to make money. We're busy in our lives, and we do this to warn you. Anything you want to add to that, Randy? Yeah, <laughs> store up your riches in heaven <laughs> you know uh, yeah i mean uh in the past money has worked quite well for uh uh trying to obtain or maintain some sort of comfort level uh th yeah things are going to get shaken up i believe here right and most people don't have the experience of inheriting television towers and things like you do. But, you know, we all understand that you've never been a man of extravagance and neither neither has Joan expected it. I mean, you've always have been happy with I've seen where and how you live in a, such an honorable way that is so far below your means. It's to it almost incomprehensibility <laughs> but, well anyway anyway uh, yeah yeah don't forget yeah to count your blessings and uh and thank yeah the source they they you receive them from you know yeah definitely well thank you ella for, for being around i'm going to be checking out your new videos and some of these other things and, and once again brother randy you know her father has been, you know, a strong, was a strong Christian influence all her life. And, and he's kind of, well, as long as we've known her, she's been helping him. And it's, it's growing much worse. Maybe we could uh, close if I mean, you as, were. As, as his personal caregiver. I'm he, yes. A, describe, all, yeah. uh, extremely. And, she does what we do. Her full-time job has been maintaining her very busy family, and she still does her content providing. So if we could, if you would, you know, close us in prayer and then include some of that, it'd probably be a real blessing. And I, I honestly think, you know. Well, I know what it's like. Uh, yeah. Uh, not feeling up to Par. Now, and, how many uh, years has that been, Ella? Was it? Did you say it's been, it's been like fifteen years? It's been a while, and and plus she was raising a family too. So yeah, those are all challenges. Yeah, in eight years now. So that's been as long about as we've known her. Oh, great. Yeah. So any, is whenever you feel led, brother. Sure. I'll attempt this. Uh, Holy, Heavenly Father, Wonderful Counselor, Abba, we come to you with thanks always for what you have accomplished and what you have done and continue to do for each of us. We pray that the tasks and the challenges you assign each of us that uh, we willingly volunteer in acceptance. We pray that 
that particularly for our own families and loved ones as as uh, as life moves on us and as our uh, individual abilities uh, change with you know maturity isn't all what some feel it's cracked up to be but that we uh, recognize uh, our responsibilities and that we we don't look away from uh, where the blessings flow from we, we continue to look to you Lord uh, for for your giving us uh, the faith and and the the strength uh, through the power that you possess that that we can uh, fulfill our obligations we we pray that that uh, all the subscribers to uh, Alan's channel here are uh, are able to be blessed with what Alan provides we pray that you continue to use Alan as your mouthpiece for proclaiming all of your truths that you have revealed in your word. We pray that it's it has always been done in a God-pleasing way. We pray that Alan is able to continue to provide uh, uh, the ears that in eyes that you send to him that that you uh you give everyone uh the intended meaning uh, of your word and that, that there is no uh questioning or or where something isn't clear that uh you give them give them the the truths uh to rely on your word is truth uh, and we pray that as this weekend continues that uh we you re you remain uh the strength and and give us uh, you know the hope and keep us safe and whatever happens uh that we recognize your will uh, be and is always done and and we we pray for the nations we pray for uh our representatives uh we know the turmoil that exists worldwide and it's uh much of it is unimaginable but uh here we are um and we pray that that uh as the new mornings come uh it, it's another day of grace and we make the most of it all of this we ask in the messiah emmanuel everlasting father prince of peace king of kings lord of lords saving name christ jesus amen amen thank you randy thank you everybody for joining here and the main takeaway is the freemasons and you know uh let's don't get bored on it like some you know where some people are bored on the san francisco exposition and the great white exposition and you know but there's always meat on those bones and to find out that the freemasons you know are admitted that you know we're founded in this year and within two decades it had completely covered the flat earth and all of the nations were sworn to death vows to each other for, well, what's ended up is this. That's the main takeaway. Anything you want to close with, Randy? I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah, when some <laughs> good news travels fast, well, maybe not so good news also travels at about the same speed, but, you know, uh, uh, be advised, you know, where you should be receiving 
and holding on to you know the the real information you know source sola scriptura it's a flat earth nation because the golden age has passed and the mud flood was the arm again we're never going to tell you anything else why would we we're out to prove that you should do your own study and see for yourself because it is a flat earth nation and that's why we're not going to tell you anything else amen hallelujah aho aloha arrivederci ciao sayonara avera zane and good